Lesson six. Animating shapes and using masks. So open up the starter file and give it the appropriate, appropriate name. And let's get started. So let's see. They want us to go out to the 40th frame across all three layers, hit F5. Okay. Next they want, uh, I guess they want to lock everything except for the flame layer just to make sure we don't accidentally edit the other layer. Hit F6 on frame 40 for that, uh, that layer. And then they want us to alter, and let's just zoom in real good here, let's alter the shape of this so it looks different here than there. And then right click and say create shape tween. So basically it's going to tween like so. And I think I'll even drag it upwards a bit. Okay. <clears throat> And then they want us to click on the 40th frame and move it over to the 10th frame. And then basically the goal now is to make some keyframes all across there, just a few, like six. And so we've got this image of the flame, that image of the flame. Then they want us to make another, uh, you know, different looking position. This one looks a little different. Basically, they want each one of these to look a little different than the other. And I think what I like to do is I want the end points to look the same. So I'm going to go back to the first frame. This isn't necessarily the way the book is having me do it, but I'm going to copy this over here, delete, and then command shift V so it pastes in exactly the same position. So the endpoints will match. That way it won't be like jerky when it gets to the loop point. Now, create shape tween, create shape tween. Basically, in between each pair of points, we want a shape tween. So let's take a look at that now. It's kind of dancing around. Looks good. Next thing they want you to do, well, Let's see, they do show you how to uh, copy. You could copy this and paste it over here. I'm not sure if that's exactly what they want you to do, but I'm going to copy these frames. Yeah, I guess that's what they do. They have you copy and paste. So you end up with a loop over here, and they show you how you can uh, create a loop. Essentially, it's like this here. You hit this right here, and it will basically play this portion of the animation. So if you publish it, Actually, I guess that's playing the whole thing. So don't publish it, just hit return. Yeah, there we go. So it's looping just that portion. So that can be really handy if you are trying to zero in on one part of your work instead of having, uh, if you can imagine a movie that's like hundreds of frames long and usually your new work is near the end, you don't want to have to hit command return and watch the whole thing just to get to the end. So that can be a handy way to just zoom in on and see the part that you're concerned with. So once again, select all this, copy frames, and then we're going to go insert, new symbol, flame. I, I, I assume that's what they want us to call it. I guess they should make sure. Um, yeah, sure enough. So we go, when you hit enter, it takes you inside this symbol, and obviously there's nothing in here. But we're going to paste those frames that we copied. And there they are. So now, uh, let's see. We talk about using shape hints, which was a new thing for me. But uh, I, I got the hang of it. Basically, they, let's see, modify shape, use, add a shape hint. Okay, so we got A, and A goes up here. And 
shape hint B is down here so when we go here there's an A and a B and you see what was it B there yeah so it's turning green to show us that we placed it properly and what this is basically for is if you're not um, if, you're not, if the shape tween is a acting erratic, oh, it does seem to be acting erratic right there, then, oh, and that must be because I haven't switched, is that right? B is at the top, A is at the top, okay. So that just goes to show you, I guess, the utility of this. So A at the top, B at the bottom, and now it will not act so surprising. So I'm not going to concern myself with making uh, shape hints for all these frames because it is looking the way I want it to look. But if you basically, I, I, I've even told my students many times, I've shown them that you don't always get what you expect with a shape tool. But uh, evidently this tool of shape hints is there to try to help you sort of force flash to behave more in the way that you're expecting it to behave. So that takes care of that. I'm going to hit save and let's move on to uh, previewing animations with onion skinning. Okay, so turn on onion skinning, that's this. And you can see if you drag this out, it basically shows you a faint impression of the flame in the other, um, other frames. So you just want to see a few. There you go. And let's see, I think if you loop this, with the onion skinning on, yeah. So there's showing with the onion skinning on. All right, so. Moving on, adjust uh, the gradient fills. That's page 231. Turn onion skin back off. And they say to use this tool, gradient transform tool. Uh, did I get that? Yes, gradient transform tool. Oh, I'm not on an actual keyframe, so let me grab that now. Okay. So they're showing you how to adjust this, what what this all means, the focal point, rotation, size, width. <coughs> they're saying uh, to adjust it like so. So let me see, I'll do, I'm guessing they rotated it. No. Let's see. I guess they flattened it and shrank it. And they reposition this be down there. So that's basically going to change the where the yellow goes. You can see it going down there and then goes back the way it was. And they're also showing you in um, the color palette that you can change these things to be different colors. So you could Double click this and pick a different color, like purple or something. And so when you play it, now that for that one moment it's going to turn or not. Oh, yeah, we're inside here. We're not actually out in scene one. So I don't think I want to change that one because that's on the end point. Let's see if that went back. Nope. Undo, undo, undo. Okay. So if, if I were to change one, I might change one of these. Right here. Select that. Go here. Maybe change this to be more purplish. Yeah, so now the tip of the thing is more purplish. Oh, but. I did it again, I hit command return, but this is actually inside a flame symbol, which is not on the scene one timeline. Uh, at some point they're going to want you to do that, though. So, 
not sure if they already told us to do that or not. But I'm going to do that now. I'm going to go out to scene one and I'm going to get rid of this. Let's see, clear keyframes. And then I'm going to drag the flame right there. Excuse me. So, you notice the shape tween is gone, but it's contained inside this symbol. So if you go inside here, you can see that's what will play. It's a sub movie now. So if I hit Command, Return, it's still playing. Uh -huh. So now, let's see, creating and using masks. Define the mask later. Okay. Return to the main timeline, undock the te text layer, or unlock, excuse me. We'll lock this layer, so now we're on the text layer. Modify timeline layer properties. Okay, so modify timeline layer properties. You can give it a new name, you can change the color, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and, oh, mask, yeah, they say you can set it a mask. Another way to do it is, well, let's go ahead and do it this way. So they're saying if you turn it into a mask, and now you see that. So, yeah, the way I'm used to doing it is just, just right click and say mask. But basically, that is going to be the mask. This is going to be the window through which you'll see something. So, we'll make a new layer, and that one will be the fiery effect. Fiery effect, and they want you to drag it under the mask layer. Now notice how it's kind of indented. That is on purpose. So now whatever we put on this fiery effect layer, you will see it through this. Right now you, see, you can see the whole thing just disappeared because there's nothing there. Uh, in essence, this fire starter image is going to be the window or the cutout through which you see what's behind it. So now, let's see, they probably want me to drag an image out of the library. Okay, it's not in the library, so we'll go file import to stage. And we need to find PeachPit 2000. 18. Start fire. Okay. So we drag that onto the stage, and now if you lock these two layers, you'll see the fire through that. Which looks pretty cool. Animating the mask and mask layers. Adding a tween to the mask layer. So that's page 237. Unlock both the text and other layer. And now, um, yeah, they say you notice that the effect is no longer there. Uh, by the way, I think I'm going to drag this over so a little of that yellow is in it. Now let's see what it looks like. I like that. Okay, so unlocking those two. Let's see. Bitmap. Unlock this one. Delete the bitmap image of the fire. Choose the rectangle tool. the idea of getting rid of that bitmap because that looked cool. What are they going to do? Use it as a bitmap fill or something? Oh, I see. Alright, so they just was, they were giving you an example of what could be done. Oops. So I guess I will delete that image. Sadly, I liked it. Um, <clears throat> so they want now for you to create your own using a rectangle tool. They want to create this. And the fill is still set to what it was when it was the flame. But they want us to change it to something like red yellow 
double click yellow and no reason to have it transparent so I'm going to do that and looks like they want a linear gradient actually so I'm going to go there and they want yellow in the middle red right here so double click red by the way if you accidentally click and you want to get rid of it you just pull it down like that all right so now that looks like what the book is showing and 40th frame we want a keyframe 20th frame we want a keyframe and create shape tween shape tween okay and now in the middle we want us to change the gradient or the uh, position of this so we'll move it over and now if you play it you'll notice that it's moving back and forth and you can do whatever you want I, I think I actually would like to have it sweep to the side come back see what that looks like it does jerk though when the loop when you reach the end of the animation this doesn't match that so once again I would use my technique I would just copy or we just copy this frame copy frame delete that one Paste, paste frames. Yeah. So now the end points match. That way there's not going to be a jerk. Yep, it's going back and forth. Nice. And let's see, they, they're talking about adding an ease in. So, let's see. Go over here and you could just do ease in okay so that'd be negative and here we could ease out maybe uh, either way whatever looks good to you and that is the lesson see you in the next video